Good evening. Um, Ammon Bundy here. I come to you uh, with extreme concern for the people of this land. And I hope that uh, any of you that are watching this, whether you like me or hate me, um, will just consider the information that I'm presenting. Um, Governor Ensley out of Washington uh, had just made a very um, concerning announcement. He had a press conference, um, and it was quite an ordeal, about 40, 40 minutes long. And the reason why I think that it is um, essential that we keep an eye on what Governor es Ensley is doing is because in this COVID uh episode or this COVID scare, uh, Washington has led in their actions and then the other states have followed. I don't know what the connection is. Um, I really don't know, but he certainly has led, um, especially the West, but in particular the entire country. And once they have done something, the other states have followed. Um, with that being said, I am going to go through this video. It's not the entire video. It's only about four, three minutes of it. But I have sectioned off so you can understand what he's saying. I've edited it, but I haven't changed any of the chron chronology of it. I've only um, just taken a lot of the in-between stuff out so you don't have to spend 40 minutes um you know, listening to it, although I would encourage you to do that. Um, so with that, I'm going to uh, <clears throat> go to his video and I will stop it from time to time and comment and show things that uh, point things out that are very concerning. We're simultaneously moving to this second initiative of testing contact tracing and isolation of people who in fact are in infected. We think of this as a, a smart weapon and its success will de depend on uh, both the state and local public health officials and most importantly individuals and families. Okay, so first of all he says they're moving on to a second stage. He called it a weapon and then he specifically says that it is important and, and particularly families. And notice how he says families. We need people to isolate themselves, including their household, even before test results come back. So even before test results come back, isolate yourself. The fourth is to identify the contacts and quarantine those people who've had contact who may be at risk, even before that they have had a positive test. Okay, so he's talking about quarantine. He's not talking about voluntary quarantine. He's talking about quarantining them. The second uh, issue is that we will have uh, uh, testing. Uh, they will be reached by phone for the results. And uh, at that time, uh, they will be uh, asked some questions about people with whom they've had contact who might have been infected by this virus. The contact tracer, and I'll talk about who those people are, they're very highly trained people. So highly trained contract, contact tracers that will be trained in, in basically how to uh, connect all these dots with all these people. And the people who were contacted will not know who the person was who provided their name. You know, people can call in and say, I think someone was sick, so and so was sick. Uh, these contact tracers will... It, he basically enact these laws and these implementations and no one will know who actually even called in. And we want to make sure that we have enough resources to get this job done. By the end of this week we'll have 1,371 people who are fully uh, trained uh, when that is necessary to get this job done. So the people who do this work are very carefully screened. So he's just emphasizing on the people who are do doing this work and we know a uh, large amount of this work will be being done by the uh, Washington National Guard. So with that, I'd like to ask um, Lieutenant uh, Colonel Steve Hobbs to uh, address this issue. We are so pleased to support the Department of Health and its efforts to push the voluntary COVID-19 mapping program 
Okay, so I want to emphasize that this lieutenant, uh, he's actually not the head of the National Guard, but he is a senator in the Washington legislature. So he's a, he's a lieutenant in the National Guard and he's a senator. Now listen to what Governor Inslee says about these people and the importance of them uh, following orders. It's just great to have people who understand discipline and following uh, orders. It's very important in that. I'm glad that we are working in combination with the University of Washington uh, for an app that could be of assistance to people to find out if they have been in the proximity of people who are infected. So they're working with the University of Washington on uh, Basically, basically, digitally and uh, through an app, and he'll mention here hardware from Google and a Apple, um, so that they can identify people um, in restaurants and uh, on the street and whatever it may be, and identify them uh, as possibly having having COVID-19, and therefore they can implement forced uh, quarantine. That app could use some hardware, essentially, and software from Apple and, and Google. And this is a very uh, promising technology. Obviously, if, if you have somebody who's become sick and they were sitting right next to a person at a restaurant, to be able to identify that person could be very valuable. So now he's going to end to talk about families again. And notice how he talks about those who will... Uh, won't quarantine uh, at their homes. Uh, notice, and then I I'm going to make a point after this. I wanted to talk just a little bit more about the uh, isolation for families involved in this. So that means the household, the family, will need to isolate with them. And if a person cannot do that, uh, there will be other isolation facilities for them away from their household. Okay, so if he cannot, remember, that is not a choice. The way he is saying that is basically that they will be forced. And if they cannot or will not, then there will be other facilities that will be uh, prepared for them uh, to go. Now, the interesting thing is, is and this is kind of the main point of this video and thing that really concerns me. Um, and it's not just about the forced quarantines, but it's also about what they are planning on doing with the children uh, 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 that are in the situation of this forced quarantine. Now, uh, I am sad to say that, um, and I'm getting here right now, that uh, when I was given the understanding uh, by someone in Washington that this was going on in Washington or getting ready, getting ready to go on, and then they said to me, and they're going to, there, there's forced, there's uh, children, youth and children's quarantine centers. And I said, I don't know if I believe that. I can't believe that they would actually t take the children from their parents and put them in quarantine centers with people they don't know, doing things that they don't know, putting, injecting, uh, you know, whatever into their body that their parents don't know. They surely wouldn't do that. And so I said, if you're going to say those things, you better give me some evidence. So uh, they sent me some evidence, and uh, one, uh, and so I'm going to show it to you, or at least I'm going to read it to you. So if you go to governmentjobs.com, um, and you'll see that the, the Washington State Department of Children's Youth and Family has posted a job. You can also do it on ZipRecruiter. Uh, and you'll see, again, the Washington State Department of Children and Youth Families. And this is what the ad for the uh, job position is. Uh, DCYF, so the Department of Children and Youth uh, Family, is seeking current DCYF employees in King, Snohomish, and Benton counties to supervise and support children and youth in emergency quarantine centers. We are looking for current DCYF social services specialists, three, three S's, to care for children who are either COVID-19 positive, positive or who may have been exposed to COVID-19. 
There are three locations, Cedar Springs Camp, Visitation Center, and Bethel Church. Responsibilities include supervising social service specialists, providing direct care and supervision, uh, assessing and res uh, responding uh, pro uh, appropriately to meet children's needs, and engage in various educational and social activities with residents. I wish I was... I really wish that I was making this up. I really wish that I was making this up. I wanted to talk just a little bit more about the uh, isolation for families involved in this. So that means the household, the family will need to isolate with them. And if a person cannot do that, uh, there will be other isolation facilities for them away from their household. And uh, one way or another, we got to make sure we take care of people's health. For people. Yeah. How do you like that? One way or another, we got to take care of people's health. Who cares about their family, their children, their freedom, their job? Uh, who cares as long as they're healthy, right? Now, I want to put this in perspective. You might say, well, Ammon, you're missing the point. No, I'm not missing the point. The Washington COVID-19 death rate is 0 0.0126-0669. There's been less than 1,000 people die from COVID-19. That's, that's what the numbers skewed. You know that that's not accurate. That's with them counting pneumonia, flu, all of that. They still only have 908 people that they've... Uh, that have they've claimed died from COVID-19. There's 7.6 million people live in Washington. That's a 0.02126069 percent. But hey, and uh, one way or another, we got to make sure we take care of people's health. Right, one way or another, we got to take care of people's health. That's the most important thing. Unbelievable. For people who now listen, uh, go, let's go on and listen who, to this. Uh, who, who, for people who. Uh, who who finally won't comply, they're going to have to comply eventually. No one's looking to make this a federal crime. The reason we can do the contact tracing is twofold. Uh, number one, we've stood up an army, so to speak, and we now have 1,391 uh, people who on a, just a couple days notice can be available to do what's necessary to do this contact tracing. As far as refusal, it just shouldn't come to that, and it really hasn't, and that would be legally enforceable we would make sure that people know the seriousness of that issue. It's one of the reasons I'm glad we have the Guard, who are very disciplined and follow orders. I'm glad we have Department of Licensing people and the Department of Health. Um, the budget issue, as you know, uh, our preliminary numbers is that we'll be at a, you know, just under $7 billion deficit for the next three years, and this can be a real challenge for us. There's also something very wicked a brewing in Washington, D.C. So Washington State and Washington, D.C. And again, I wish I was wrong. Um, but the 116th Congress, that's our Congress right now in Washington, D.C., is proposing a bill. Uh, and it is H.R., again, it's hard to believe, but it's HR 6666. Now I'm going to read you the description at the very, the very first paragraph of this bill. HR 6666. To authorize the Secretary of Health and Human Services to award grants to eligible entities to conduct diagnostic testing for COVID-19 and related activities such as contact tracing through mobile health units and as necessary at individuals residents and for other purposes my friends i did not read that incorrectly it is house bill 666 and it authorizes the secretary of health and human services to conduct related activities such as contact, contact tracing through mobile health units as necessary at individuals' residence and for other purposes.
Uh, one way or another, we got to make sure we take care of people's health. Okay, my friends, this is the line in the sand. <clears throat> I have told, heard over and over again from people all across the country, especially militias. Oh, you know, we're preparing for the day that we hope never comes. Well, that day's already come and gone. It's already gone. But I hope, I hope and pray that the line in the sand is at least our children and our families. I hope that it's at least that line. And I hope that we can unite together as neighbors and friends, as people who love each other, as people who love God, and stop these wicked people from what they're doing. And we here in Idaho and across the country have started something that I am asking everybody to join. And the way you join it is by texting rights to 80123. Text rights to 80123. And then fill out the form. And what it'll do is it will uh, connect you with your neighbors who have the same feelings as you do. The same uh, understanding or at least our understanding and waking up. Because what this is going to come down to, it for sure will come down to this. I, I am certain it will. It does, I don't know how long it'll take, but it will come down to this. It'll come down to them trying to force you to comply and be obedient and for your neighbors and all of you standing together and saying no. And the only way that we're going to be safe and preserve this country, the only way is for us to say no together and mean it and be prepared, be organized, uh, communicate with each other, and stop this wickedness that is coming coming at us full-blown. Stop it. We must expose the darkness, and we must stop it. And I, unfortunately, we have to stop it at our front doors this time. It will be at our front doors. I wish I was wrong. And I want to tell you all that I, I, love, I love you. I love people. And I am concerned for each of us, and I'm concerned for this land that we live in and what is happening. So I ask you to do something about it. And the only thing that I can tell you to do right now is unite with your neighbors. And I think the best way to do that is by texting rights to 80123. And that will connect you with your neighbors. And uh, I'm asking you to do that uh, mainly for, for all of us, uh, for the people in, across this country. Thank you.